Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 25 of the chapter Solutions. While we were studying different types of solutions and we were studying in details about solutions, we have been discussing colligative properties of solutions. So what are colligative properties? Colligative properties are the properties that only depend on the concentration of the solute. They do not depend on the nature of the solute. So it doesn't matter what solute you take. As long as you know what is the concentration of that solute, you would know what the colligative property would be. There are four colligative properties or properties that only depend on the concentration and not on the nature of the solute. These properties are relative lowering of vapor pressure, the elevation and boiling point, the depression and freezing point, and osmotic pressure. We have studied all these properties. And if you look at the formulae, you have noticed that relative lowering of vapor pressure is P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught is equal to N2 now ignore the I in all of these. N2 upon N1. That is number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of the solvent. Now, if you really look at the other formulae also, if you look at delta Tb, you will find that delta Tb is the elevation and boiling point. Elevation and boiling point is equal to Kb into M, where Kb is the ebulloscopic constant or the molar elevation constant for the solvent and M is the molality of the solution. And what is molality? Molality is the number of moles of solute present in 1 kg of the, of the solvent. Similarly, if you take delta Tf, that is the depression and freezing point, the formula for delta Tf, depression and freezing point, the third colligative property is Kfm, where Kf is the cryoscopic constant or the molar depression constant. And M again is molality, which talks of the concentration of the solute. And pi, that is osmotic pressure, again ignore the I, is C, where C is molarity, and molarity is number of moles of solute divided by the volume of the solution into R, which is the gas constant, and T is the temperature. Why am I repeating these formulae? If you notice whether you calculate the number of moles here, or you, what is number of moles? Number of moles is the mass of the solute that you take divided by the molar mass. So you can calculate the number of moles of anything just by having taken the mass of a substance and divided by its molar mass that gives you the number of moles. So if you just take the mass of any solute that is not known to you and you make a solution and find out the colligative properties for uh, that solution and you are able to calculate the colligative properties, from these formulae, it is possible for you to calculate the molar mass of the solute. Why? Because in all of them, you will have the number of moles of solute. And number of moles of solute would be the mass that you took divided by the molar mass, that is M2. Therefore, in all the colligative properties, if you remember, we found out the molar mass of the solute. So it was an indirect way of finding out the molar mass in case you did not know the solute and you find out the molar mass and you look at the table of molar masses of different compounds and it matches uh, the molar mass, you get an idea of what the compound or what the solute may be. But even otherwise, it is helpful to verify the molar mass of a substance. So that is how we always target at finding out the molar mass of the solute when we calculate the colligative properties. Now there is a problem. Since colligative properties only depend on the molarity, <coughs> anything that may affect the molarity or molality or the concentration, however you are measuring it, molality or molarity, anything for any reason, if the concentration is affected of the solute that would affect the colligative property logically because colligative property does not depend on the nature of the solute it only depends on the number of particles so let us assume you have an ionic compound you know that ionic compounds they dissociate into ions when you dissolve them in water right when you dissolve them in a solvent which has a high dielectric constant they would they would just ionize they would fall apart. The positive ion and the negative ion will fall apart. As a result, what will happen? The number of moles of the solute that you took, as soon as it enters water and it dissociates, the number of moles becomes twice the amount. If you took one mole of KCl 
as soon as it goes into solution it will break down into k positive and cl negative and result in the formation of two moles now the colligative property would be calculated on the basis of the number of moles so mass given upon molar mass gives you number of moles but number of moles is twice as much therefore the molar mass that you would calculate from that would be wrong there would be an error in the molar mass that you would be calculating such molar masses when you have such a situation where the concentration is affected due to some reason whether it is dissociation or the opposite association sometimes for example in ethanoic acid the molecules you put them in water you put ethanoic uh, not in water in benzene because you need a non-polar solvent for that so you take ethanoic acid and you put it in benzene and you find that two molecules of ethanoic acid they join together to form a dimer now the number of moles if you assume that all molecules dimerized then now when you see you find the number of molecules whatever was there or number of moles is reduced to half because every two molecules have joined to make one giant molecule so that has also affected the number of moles and as soon as the number of moles are affected the colligative property gets affected and once the colligative property gets affected you don't know that dimerization has occurred you are carrying on with your experiment and what do you find you calculate a wrong molar mass according to that you whatever the number of moles you calculate you calculate the wrong molar mass such molar masses which you calculate to be wrong because of either dissociation or association of the molecules or the solute particles are known as abnormal molar masses and that is the topic of this video abnormal molar masses so let us come to the first example again kcl has a molecular mass of 74 or molar mass i should not call it molecular mass because it's an ionic compound it never forms a molecule it is a formula mass a gram formula mass as we call it anyway kcl has a mass of 74.5 grams per mole one mole of kcl has a mass of 75 74.5 grams when you put it in water let us assume that all of it dissociates when all of it ionizes so the number of moles will double why because now if you had one mole of kcl when it goes into water you have now have one mole of k positive and one mole of cl negative and colligative property does not know that this is k positive and this is cl negative it only counts the number of particles so it now counts two moles it says there are two moles of solute in the solution and therefore the delta tb that is the elevation in the boiling point for one mole of kcl what is the formula for elevation of boiling point k k b and m molality so kb if you had one molal solution and which uh, you started with of kcl that one molal solution actually turns what kcl turns into two moles so the solution becomes two molal so you will have two moles into the kb value for water is 0.52 k therefore the value of uh, delta tb would become 1.04 kelvin or the elevation in boiling point would be 1.04 kelvin which is actually double of what was expected and in all the formulae when you find out the uh, molar when you're finding out the number of moles uh, the number of moles are always calculated as the mass w2 upon molar mass that is m2 so whenever you're calculating the number of moles whether you're calculating it for molality molar mass is always in the denominator in each colligative property if you do not understand what i'm telling you i would encourage you to watch the previous few videos and this will become very clear to you i would not like to go in uh, to it again anyway molar mass is always in the denominator in all the formulae so if the colligative property is doubled what will happen to the molar mass in which was in the denominator it would be halved it would become half so if we weren't aware of the dissociation if we had no idea that when i put one mole of kcl into one kg of water it is going to dissociate and form two moles if i had no idea of it i would have calculated the molar mass of 
the solute, let us assume I did not know it was KCl, I would have calculated the molar mass to be half of it because the colligative property actually has been doubled. And from this formula, when I'm calculating the molar mass, the molar mass comes out to be 37.25 grams, which is wrong. It is not normal. It is abnormal. It is an abnormal molar mass. KCl does not. In this case, I know I started with KCl. So I know the molar mass of KCl cannot be half of 74.5. So there is something, there's an error there. Similarly, when we come to the second example where dimerization occurs, that is acetic acid, when you take it, it dimerizes, two molecules get together to form one giant molecule bonding through hydrogen bonds where the medium is, is uh, benzene. It dimerizes in benzene solvent and this, why benzene? Why did we take water here and why did we take benzene here? Because this was an ionic compound. It needed a polar solvent and this is a covalent compound. It needs a covalent uh, solvent that is a non-polar solvent. So it uses a non-polar solvent would have a low dielectric constant. So when you take uh, two molecules of, I mean, when you take uh, ethanoic acid, it dimerizes and now the number of moles has decreased. And if we had to calculate the value of, uh, let us say delta TB for this um, mixture or this solution, the number of moles instead of two, I would have got 0 0.5. It would have, I started with one mole of ethanoic acid, but it reduced to half. So the number of moles will be reduced to half. If number of moles will be reduced to half, the molar mass would be doubled. So here, the number of moles would be half, that is 0 0.5. And M2 will be calcul calculated to be double. That is molar mass when you calculate it, it would be double. The number of moles is half, therefore molar mass would be double of it. Such molar masses that are higher or lower than expected values are called abnormal molar masses. Right? Now, we have understood, yes, there's something wherever uh, ionization or dimerization or any association or dissociation happens, there is a possibility that the mass that you calculate would be different. And it, the problem doesn't stop here, that you should know what associates, what dissociates. The, the problem is not just that much. The problem is still the further ahead, a little more complicated. Some of your ionic compounds, they are good electrolytes and some of them are bad electrolytes. You remember equilibrium when we did? And in chemical equilibrium, I told you, that when you have a weak electrolyte, not all of it dissociates. Only a part of the, sol of the solute dissociates into its ions. And then an equilibrium is established. Now, I'm not going to go into the equilibrium part of it. Let us talk of now. It's not necessary that when you have a substance that ionizes in solution, it is not even necessary that all of it will ionize. And therefore, it is not this. These two are extreme cases. We said in KCl, the number of moles became absolutely double. If you had a weak electrolyte, it may have just increased uh, from a 1 mole to 1.25 or 1.05. The difference could have been anything. And then the molar mass that you would have calculated would have confused you even further because it would not have been a direct multiple. It would be a fraction of it which associated or dissociated. So that creates, then in that case, you will get a molar mass, which would be pretty wrong. And that's the reason why we call it abnormal molar mass. Now, what is the solution for it? The solution for this problem was found out by a scientist called Walthoff. Walthoff, he, in 1880, he gave a factor which was known as, which was known after him, which was known as the Walthoff's factor. And it is represented by the letter I, small letter I. And what, what did this factor do? This was just a factor which you would use to multiply in any of the, multiply with any of the colligative properties in order to remove the error caused due to association or dissociation. And due to the formation of an abnormal, due to the calculation of an abnormal molar mass you could uh, put this factor in and that would rectify or correct whatever wrong had been done due to the association or dissociation. So what is this factor? 
This factor I can be defined as a ratio between the normal molar mass upon abnormal molar mass. Now what would normal be? Normal will be the expected, what you would calculate theoretically. For example, in the case of KCL, it was 74.5 grams per mole. That is the molar mass that it should be. The mass of one mole of KCL is this. So that is the normal molar mass. And divided by the abnormal molar mass, and what is abnormal molar mass? The mass that you calculated experimentally. When you carried out the experiment and you calculated, you found out the colligative property, this was the mass that you calculated. So that is your abnormal molar mass or the mass with error. So you will take the normal molar mass divided by abnormal molar mass. It can also be said as the observed colligative property upon the calculated colligative property. Now, I want you to look at this very carefully. Molar mass and colligative property are in the numerator and denominator. They are opposites. If one increases, the other decreases. If the colligative pro property, it became double, the molar mass became half. If the colligative property became half, the molar mass became double, right? So when you talk of colligative, when we talked of the normal molar mass, we said it is the mass that you calculate. And abnormal molar mass is the one that you observed. You carried out the experiment and you calculated it wrong from the colligative property. So when you put, when you talk of the I factor in terms of the calculated colligative property, the numerator and denominator for colligative property would be different. So the abnormal, the colligative property for abnormal molar mass is the observed colligative property, the one that you have observed. That comes in the numerator. And what you should ideally have been if there was no association or dissociation, that becomes the calculated colligative property. So the calculated colligative property would be the theoretical one. If we had only one mole of KCL, then this would have been the value of delta TB. It would have been 1 into 0 0.52, which is equal to 0 0.52 K. That would have been the increase in the boiling point. But that is that is the calculated colligative property but what was observed what was observed was not this what was observed was 1.04 it was twice the amount so you'll say observed colligative property that is 2 divided by the calculated colligative property which would have been 0 0.52 2 into 0 0.52 here and 0 0.5 uh, what the, the calculated would have been 1 into 0 0.52 now, I can also be calculated in terms of the uh, number of moles of the particles present in the solution after you've dissolved it. So, when you talk of number of moles uh, of the particles or the solute, you would say I is equal to the total number of moles of particles after dissociation or association. That is, the number of moles that are actually now present. The number of moles of particles. So if you had KCL, one mole of KCL, what is the number of moles which is present after dissociation? Two moles. So you will have, you write two divided by the number of moles of particles before association or dissociation. So if you took one mole of KCL, that would be one. And in the numerator, you would have two. So this is how you calculate the value of I. And once you insert this factor into the calculations of all the colligative properties, the problem that you have as a result of the association or dissociation, it can be, it can be, uh, it is removed in a way. Now, also, it is not necessary that all the molecules, all of them associate or dissociate. So even if uh, it occurred partially, even that would give you the correction. So this is the Werther factor is a kind of a correction for any association or dissociation. So the Werther factor, you multiply all the colligative properties by the Werther factor. So for example, if you have relative lowering of vapor pressure, is P1 naught minus P1 upon P1 naught. That is, this is the change in vapor pressure and this was the vapor pressure of the solvent before the solute was added to it, is equal to number of moles of solute divided by number of moles of solvent you multiply it by i and i can be calculated by any of these ways 
if you calculated delta TB, which is equal to KBM, KBM remain as such, you multiply it by the factor I, which again is calculated by any of these ways. Delta TF becomes IKFM and pi, which is osmotic pressure, becomes equal to I uh, molarity, that is number of moles upon volume of the solution, and into RT gas constant and temperature. So all the if this error can be corrected or abnormal molar masses can be corrected by adding the one half factor when you are putting or considering the one half factor or adding it to it or multiplying it to all of them so that you get the correct value of the molar mass of the solute. For strong electrolytes, the dissociation is almost complete. And in those cases, you would expect the uh, value of the, uh, the dissociation is almost complete and therefore the, you would expect the value of the want of factor to be exact double or triple depending on since the dissociation is complete as we took in the case of KCL which was a strong electrolyte. So when you have really strong electrolytes they dissociate almost completely and give you want of factors which are almost equal to the number of ions they have. For example KCL sodium chloride, magnesium sulfate, all of these are strong electrolytes. When you put them in water, KCl will give you two moles of uh, solute particles, K positive and Cl negative. Sodium chloride will give you sodium and chloride ions, totally dissociated, so one mole will give you two moles. Magnesium sulfate will also give you one mole of magnesium and one mole of sulfate, therefore two moles in the solution. Therefore, the factor, the want of factor for all of these will be two. And potassium sulfate is K2SO4. Here you, will, you have two ions of potassium and one ion of sulfate. So you will have three ions per a molecule, uh, per a formula unit. And therefore, if you take one mole of K2SO4, the number of moles when it enters the solution comes out to be three. And therefore, its Montox factor should be approximately equal to three, which it actually is. It is in the... Uh, the higher values of um, 2.9 or 2. Point, uh, it's pretty high. You can uh, verify it from the table in your textbook. So this was about one half factor and abnormal molar masses. In the next video, I'll solve two numerical problems based on, I just explained those solved examples to you. And with that, uh, that would be the last video of this chapter. So if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.